Go away, Craig. <sighs> the dulcet tones of a crow. I made the mistake of sticking some seed behind me in case the king parrots came. And the crows turned up instead. So yay. So sorry if you have to listen to the crows. But anyway, I'm all set up now so I'm, this is happening. <laughs> Welcome to the Lisa Love Stitch and Floss Tube channel. I can't remember what episode this is because it's been ages since um, I've recorded anything. I think it's been over a month. Um, I'll do a chit chat at the end, but I know a lot of people just want to get into the cross stitch. Um, so we'll just start with that. So today I have two whips to show you and one FFO. And um, and then I've got a knitting project at the end and some yarn, yarn and shop update stuff to show you, just a little bit. And, um, and then chit chat. So let's get into it. My name's Lisa. I'm coming to you from sunny Brisbane in Queensland, Australia. It is a nice um, autumn morning and um, it's actually, is it winter? No, it's autumn still. Um, it's going to be a top of 25 degrees today. Um, it's still t-shirt weather. <laughs> um, but yeah, it's, it's always like this in winter. It gets cold in the early morning and in the evening, but otherwise during the day it's like mid-20s usually. So, I hope you've all been keeping well. And if you're new to my channel, welcome. Um, and a special thank you to those who subscribe and come back for more visits. I really appreciate your returning to my channel. And if you are new to this channel, please like and subscribe. Um, I'd love to see you back here again. Um, yeah, so... Oh, the crows. Shut up. Let's see if they calm down after a minute. Oh, they're desperate for that. There's corn in there. <laughs> they're desperate for that seed. Um, just while we're listening to the crows, um, this is the Jocelyn Prowse design mug I got from Spotlight. Isn't it cute? It's a black cockatoo with um, some native flowers. And she has some beautiful um, quilting fabric, furnishing fabric, and furnishing designs all with an Australian theme um, and yeah so if you haven't come across her fabric before um, definitely check her out she's available from Spotlight in Australia and probably New Zealand I don't know hmm. I'll give up in a minute I'm sure so to get started, um, I haven't done a lot of stitching. I mean, I did a lot of stitching, but it doesn't look like I did a lot of stitching. I have an FFO that I started and finished in between floss tube um, episodes, so you haven't seen it at all yet. And um, then I just worked on mainly two things, and then I've been knitting. So, because I wanted to get, I started a sweater and I wanted to get it to a where I've at least nearly finished it so that I wouldn't lose my momentum on it and it would sit there and languish for ages. So um, that's why I haven't done a lot of stitching. It doesn't look like I've done a lot of stitching because I have been focusing on my knitting. But um, one of the designs that I did work on is by fa uh, Fax? Fox and Rabbit Designs, um, Sarah Newman 1822. And hopefully you can see that. It looks reflective here, so I can't really see. Actually, I should put my um, other glasses on so you can see me. See my eyes. Okay, so this is the design. It's really pretty. It's sort of got orangey tones, peachy tones. I just love it. Anyway, so... That one, sorry it's not ironed, don't want me too organised, do you? 
Uh, this is on um, beautiful lemon butter um, fabric by Jay's Cross Stitch. Nearly there. So basically, I don't know what I showed last time, so this is where I'm up to. So I've started in the top left corner, and I think I might have finished this bird last time holding some grapes and then I've worked on that flower pot with the flowers there yeah the urn of flowers they're gorgeous just love the colors and I can't remember I think this is 32 count looks like it I think it's 32 count or 36 count actually I think it's 36 count so it's really gorgeous. I just love the colours in this. Um, it's all um, just DMC that I'm using. Um, but I just really love it. It just speaks to me. You know when you just find a, um, the colours of the design often talk to me. And I just, yeah, fall in love. <laughs> the same goes for the next project, which is... Um, oops. It is Miss Lucy Calcut 1825 by Just Stitching Along and this was another one where the colours spoke to me, all the pretty pinks, raspberries. That's just my cup of tea. I've made really good progress on this one. I need to work on the border some more so that, because that's the boring bit, because it's all the same. So I need to work, do some focus work on that so that um, by the time I get finished with the motifs I don't have too much border to worry about otherwise it'll be a bit um, unfun. So far I've only started like part of a flower on the border so I need to, <laughs> I really need to um, get moving on that. So the bit that I worked on, I think I might have already finished this set of flowers when we last um, did floss tube together and this is the one I worked on I think I started and, and did this much I'm just up to virtually doing the urn that it's sitting in um, yeah I think I started this after my last floss tube episode so that's what I have done so far it's really pretty I just love these motifs uh, all the flowers I mean who doesn't love flowers so pretty and all the colours just speak to me. So yeah, so that's going along nicely. So if you're new, you might not have seen. I'm not going to take it out of this at the moment. But basically that's what I've got done so far. So yeah, definitely need to do some homework of working on the border. Um, otherwise, it's um, I'm going to be on the border all the time to finish it and it'll be boring and I don't want to do that that probably didn't come out right and make sense but anyway you know what I'm saying <laughs> so that's um all my whips so I'm sorry that's not very exciting is it not very much um the next thing is an FFO so I wanted to do something I bought this chart when I was at the um 2019 my first needlework retreat which is the needlework retreat of 2019 with linen and threads down in the central coast in New South Wales and uh, I met Laura there that was a really fun retreat it was our first one together and um, I really 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 miss um, that I haven't been able to get down to New South Wales since COVID because I really miss Laura <laughs> And I, I miss my family and I miss Laura and I want to do another retreat or something or catch up together and just sit and stitch or knit or whatever we're going to do together. <laughs> just I just miss her. So, hi Laura. I miss you. <laughs> um, yeah, so um, I bought this and I, I saw it straight away and I just knew I wanted to stitch this for Wayne. And um, it's a little tiny sampler. It looks really vintagey and antique, and it has some dogs on it—three dogs, in fact. 
and it was just perfect and we didn't even have our other two babies yet our two dogs um, but I just knew I wanted to stitch it for Wayne because he loves dogs so I got it and it sat there and then we got our two little dogs last year and I was just thinking about it and I thought oh I'd really love to stitch that for our anniversary this year we're having our eighth anniversary on the um, 26th of May this this month and um, anyway so I started I started that because I wanted to get it done and finished and fully FFO'd um, by the time our um, anniversary come around so I, I did it in record time it's only small so it didn't take that long um, what I did do was convert some of the colors because I just used what I had available and I don't think I haven't put them here but I did put it on my Instagram post of this picture so if you look through my Instagram you'll see it and I think I did put what I used there and if I remember I will I will post it down below but if I don't it won't be there <laughs> sorry um, but I just wanted to use what I had in stash so it's DM, mostly DMC and I think I can remember some of it so anyway without further ado I did a present to Esther Clark um, and it was 18 something and um, I changed it to a present to Wayne Taylor so I changed the writing and I wanted to do it for the dog on the rug represents Wayne's childhood dog. Here it is. It's framed by Keynote Framing. A bird just flew over my head. Um, it's framed by Keynote Framing and at Everton Park. And I wanted to... I did this on fabric I got from... J I think it was either Jay's Cross Stitch or Journey of a Stitcher. I had this fabric floating around. I think it's 30 to count and I did it yeah I think it's 32 count I did it two over two um, and the white creamy white behind the dog on the rug is um, and, and the white in the checkers is um, silk uh, gum nut silks thread that I had and um, I can't remember the name of it, but it's just a nice cream colour, creamy white. And then uh, the red is just a red I had floating in my DMC pile. And black is 310. And the sort of... Oh no, that's not a silk either. I thought I used a different... Anyway, I think the rest is DMC. So the words are 310. And the dog, uh, the black dog, that's Sooty. She's 310. And I added in some white on her back where she's got white. And I added a little bit of near her rump. There's a little bit of sort of beigey colour. And that's just for the colours that she has in her fur because she's a black sable dog. So that means she's got multiple colours in her black fur. And then the other one represents Paris and she's got some blonde and white on her paws and a white on her chest. And so that represents Paris. And this one represents um, Zach, Wayne's childhood dog, Zach, who was a golden retriever. And um, yeah, so I thought that would be really sweet to do that for Wayne. So you can hang that in his office. And I really like this frame. It's got like a bit of a texture to it and a bit of a burnish um, lighter colour to the um, finish. Sort of a coppery colour. Yeah, so I really, really love this and I'm very happy with it. Um, oh yes, it does. I did put on the back here. It's a design by Scarlet House. Um, I completed it on the 8th of May and... Uh, sorry, 8th of March, and um, it's 2 over 2 on 32 count linen. So, um, yeah, really love it. I even like how he does his little seal of, of approval, the framer. <laughs> his wife does the stretching of the fabric, so they stretch all their fabric. So if you're in Brisbane, and some of the places that you get them framed at, they just staple them in. Um, but if you are um, 
preferring to have it traditionally stretched um, and laced, this is the place to go. And they always do an exceptional job. And um, yeah, really speedy service. I only waited a week or two and it was done. So um, yeah, I'm so happy with this. So Wayne's already seen that he's got it. I gave it to him as soon as I got it. You know, doesn't matter. And um, so that's his anniversary present from me. So that's all of the cross stitch. Um, so I'm sorry it's not much if you're here for the cross stitch. Um, and thank you if you don't want to stay to watch the rest of it with the um, knitting and, and shop update stuff and the chit chat. Um, thank you very much for coming and I look forward to having you back next time if you want to come back. Um, but for those of you that want to stay, let's go into knitting. So I've won um, whip. <laughs> which is my sweater, which is the Worsted Boxy by Hohe Locatelli. And when I'm editing, if I can, I might put a picture in here. Um, and, and the Worsted Boxy, I'm using the required yarn, which is Malabrigo Rios. Um, and it's a worsted weight yarn, hand dyed in Peru. And um, it is in the colorway Teal Feather. And I've had this yarn a few years for this specific little I can't talk specific project but had been too chicken to start it <laughs> you always worry like will it be too big or will I pick the wrong size needles like I did a swatch but I'm not confident with swatches yet um, my gauge was nearly right on there but it this is a great beginner sweater I think because it's a, a boxy sweater so it's got like oh massive amount of positive ease so even if you are a tight knitter and you you know it ends up being on the smaller side it's still going to fit you i think you know because it's got such an allowance for positive ease so what's happened here oh dear what's going on i've got caught so i'm just at the part where I've, i'm um separating for the sleeves so it's not very exciting looking because it's just a big square or rectangle because it's like a box shape. Um, but yeah, so that's the, the bottom and it's a bottom up. I prefer top down, but anyway. So it's quite a lot of fabric, but I'm quite a lot of woman. <laughs> so I'm about to separate for the sleeves. It has a drop sleeve. So that means once the sleeves are done and joined up at the shoulder, it drops down part way down your arm and then you don't have as much to actually cast on to knit for the sleeves themselves. But on the worsted boxy, she has it where the sleeves sort of finish three quarter length. But I think I, depending on how much yarn I have left over at the end, I may do it all the way down to the cuffs. What I'll do is with my skein of yarn, I'll split it in two, roughly even portions and that way I can knit um, the sleeves and know I have enough for each sleeve so I don't get to one and go oh I finished it long and the other one there's only enough to do like a short sleeve so uh, I don't want to unpick stuff so um, yeah so this has just been a really potato chippy type knit so far I just did the um, it was supposed to be one by one rib but I ended up doing two by two because I didn't read the pattern properly but it doesn't matter um, so once you cast on you just do a short rib section which in hindsight I'd probably because it wants to roll up It won't once I block it, but I think I would have preferred to do like a bigger slightly bigger maybe double that um, height of a um, Waistband and then um, it's just stocking it all the way up. So when you're knitting on circular needles in the round um, you just knit 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 all the way around so um, yeah, and I haven't been worried too much about pooling and I've been very lucky that the way this yarn's dyed, it doesn't, you know, it looks fine. It hasn't done the big pooling marks that you get sometimes with hand dyed yarn. Um, so yeah, I didn't worry about, but I did have some of my yarn was split up already into smaller balls anyway. So I've just been grabbing whichever ball. So that might've helped as well. To even out the color but yeah I absolutely love it I can't I think this color is gonna look good on me I can't wait for it to finish sometimes it 
it may look on here like it's more blue but it's actually quite a oh it's a blue green it's a teal color so I think it looks really lovely so I'm just splitting for the sleeves and then I've only got six inches to do to get to the shoulders and then you just graft the shoulders on with a three needle bind off and then um, I've just got to do the sleeves and that's it and it's done so yeah I just need to where I've up to I started the first round of the first section of the front part and I just need to take the other stitches and put them on hold um, while I work on the front part and then you just do the back and then join it at the top so yeah so I really enjoyed this and I like that there's minimal um, seaming I'd prefer if there was no seaming that's why I like top down because you can just knit in the round all the way down but anyway that's what it is so I'm looking forward to having that finished hopefully by next time I'll be able to wear it and show you um, and just in time for winter as well so this is in my bag that I got from I can't remember the name if I remember I'll put it down below um, but it was a lady in Toowoomba made this bag and I love it it's very retro it's got a nice big zipper pouch at the bottom at the back and nice little handles it's got a good allowance with the drawstring at the top so there's plenty of room and um, it's got a pocket on the inside as well so I love it so that's that um, okay shop update I'll show you what's coming I'm planning to do some markets um, closer to Christmas like later this year like I'm um, by the end of this month I should have finished uni and for better or worse whether I pass or not I'll be finished um, and then I just want to focus on um, in my spare time getting some hand dyed yarn dyed up and um, and then having a market stall later in the year with yarn and cross stitch notions and things like that leading up to Christmas so stay tuned for more on that this one I need to retie the ties because I just dyed it and then twisted it up into a skein so I'll fix that before I put it in my shop but this is my first go at hand dyeing and I had a wonderful time I got the yarn undyed from Nundal Woolen Mill in New South Wales they're near, to, um, uh, near Tamworth <laughs> God, my brain went then um, they're near Tamworth and um, I got the dyes from Landscape Dyes at Craft Colour with a K and um, yeah the, I got a sample um, packet and then just, just uh, I can't even talk I got a sample box which comes with about half a dozen different dyes in little pots and it's in powdered form and then um, I, that gives you an idea for what the colours are like and then I didn't want to invest in like a whole big container of dye if I was going to be really terrible at it so or I wasn't going to enjoy the process so I really enjoyed it I want to do more I have 10 skeins I've used three and um, yeah I want to do more so this colorway is sort of got it's more like a blue but it has some sections in one of the skeins at least where it sort of almost looks like lilac yeah like a lilac color so they're the three skeins and there's some little bits that didn't take up the dye where it's like a bit of natural white which is really nice I like that mixed in with this pale blue slash lilac color it's like a blue lilac color it's just gorgeous um, let's see if I can get that in the Sun yeah so I just I love it it was so much fun so this is a four ply 100 grams four ply I think it's just over 400 and something meters 420 meters or something um, and it's gorgeous I just love it and I wanted to start with just a sock yarn but they do have a, a equivalent eight ply yarn there that has hemp in it so I'd really love to get some of those um, it's a bit more pricey but um, I would love to get some of those and try dyeing those because I think that's something different to have 
a hemp blend. I haven't seen that before. So I think that'd be really nice. Um, yeah, so I really love this yarn. This is just um, Merino um, nylon blend. And it's beautiful and nice that it comes from New South Wales, which is where I used to live. Um, so yes, yeah, so I'm so happy. And I might have to get some and dye myself a sweater quantity of, um, of yarn, maybe this colour. <laughs> I really love it. So um, yeah, I really like the paleness of it and I'll just be experimenting as I go forward, um, developing a recipe book so that I can try out different colours, but I really like this pastel sort of lilac colour, lilac -y blue. Um, yeah, so let me know what you think below. Um, and hopefully I'll have more of this available. I don't know whether I'll list it in my shop yet or just put it aside and save it for when I have my market stall um, later in the year. So I'll think about it. <laughs> you can always put your opinion in on what you think I should do. Um, and just lastly, oh gosh, I've got one little update and I don't have, I only have two of these left, but I have ordered more as well as a couple of other different designs with the same style thing. But I saw these and I thought, oh my God, I have to get them. I don't necessarily use them. Oh, it might be good when I do cross stitch, uh, cross stitch, crochet. <laughs> these are adjustable rings and you put your thread wrapped around it. So when you're, um, crocheting the threads on there rather than rubbing and wrapping around your finger which I did try it with my crochet and it was really really easy to use now I haven't adjusted this it's at the smallest setting but you can pull each side away gently from each other to you know I wouldn't do it too far but you can do it to adjust it to your finger but yeah you can just put it on your finger and you can be crocheting and it just runs the yarn around the swan's tail if I put that yeah so that's just a little um, silver colored ring and it's really nice quality and it's solid and I just love it so you could use these as well like if you're doing continental knitting or you're doing to um, you're doing um, color work knitting um, so you can keep your threads from getting tangled um, and it also helps maintain tension if you have issues with tension. So um, there's two of these left in my store. They've sold really well. Um, I didn't get too many to begin with because I wasn't sure if people would be interested in them, but they've sold really well. So I've ordered some more, but they may, may take till next month to come in. Um, we'll see. So there are two left in my shop if you want to go onto my Etsy store and have a look at that. Um, yeah, they're really comfortable to wear. You just need to adjust it. If you've got really, really big fingers, probably not for you because they are on the small side, but you can adjust it. I mean, I have, um, my fingers are bigger than they used to be and, and I still managed to fit it on my finger once I opened one out. So yeah, it was comfortable. Um, so yeah, so that's um, all of the cross stitch knitting shop update chat so now I'll talk about if I can remember what I've done in the past sort of month or so um, what I've been up to so I haven't been on because um, I've been so stressed out and busy with um, uni like I didn't even want to do it but <laughs> I'm so close to getting a qualification I just need to do it. So fingers crossed I pass. Um, essays just aren't my thing. Um, but anyway, I've only got, I'm doing it through two universities at the moment, technically three, but cross institutional study through two so that the third one can give me my qualification. So I'm enrolled, I was enrolled in my Masters of Library and Information of information, oh, let's start again. I was enrolled at QUT, um, which is Queensland University of Technology, um, to do my Masters of Information Science Library and Information Practice. And I started that years ago. 
And then I started work um, at my current employment four years ago and it was just too much to do full-time study with full-time work and we were just overloaded at work and um, yeah so I put it on hold and forgot all about it. Fast forward to last year um, I get contacted by the course coordinator of the, at the time and he said um, we're not running due to COVID we're not running the um, masters anymore we're cancelling it so um, you're so close to getting a qualification you could do a couple more subjects three more subjects actually or actually four more subjects and you could um, graduate with your graduate diploma in information science library and information practice which is basically I can still get the same job as I would with a master's so um, to you know work or run a library or whatever so anyway um, I thought about it and I thought oh well it's only a few more subjects I can push through and do it so I bit the bullet and I finished the um, he said that there was a practical um, unit that I was in at the time that I put it on hold and I need to finish that and you have to do like a journal and everything and you do work experience well because of COVID I couldn't do the work experience but Alia, the governing body for library and information professionals um, had said that you know they they'd account my um, job experience because I still work in information management um, they'd count that experience and let me just do my journal assignment and then I could still pass that subject so I did that and then I just had three more subjects to do so I did a summer subject over the Christmas break um, which I passed and um, and then now I'm doing two more subjects one through Charles Sturt University and one through um, Curtin University. So Charles Sturt is in Wagga Wagga in New South Wales and Curtin University is in Perth in WA. So uh, I'm doing those online and um, I just the one at Charles Sturt is on web design and the other one at Curtin University is on um, information literacy. So that's the one I don't like as much because it's, it's more theory than anything else. I'm more hands-on practical type person. So anyway, so I'm doing those. Fingers crossed. I have two more, uh, sorry, one more assignment with Curtin Uni to do by the end of the month and um, two more assignments with Charles Sturt University. So one is to just submit three responses to posts on the discussion board. So that's fine. That's easy. Um, and then my final assignment will be a, like a justification report um, reviewing like someone's website. Um, so yeah I've just got to get through those by the end of May and then I can graduate if I pass I'll be able to submit um, a request to get recognition for those subjects at QUT and then if I accept that then um, I will graduate in September so that'll be good to have that under my belt <laughs> and um, yeah, so that's been keeping me pretty busy and stressed out. So I took annual leave for three weeks just recently and um, I went back to work last week and um, I thought I was going to get all this fun stuff done but I ended up spending most of it doing assignments unfortunately. But anyway, that's the way the cookie crumbles sometimes, doesn't it? You don't always get um, to do what you want to do. You have priorities. So anyway, so that... Um, I'll feel better once I get to June <laughs> and I can just enjoy that I don't have any more uni to do and I've finished for better or worse whatever happens whether I pass or not and can get back to doing fun stuff like cross stitch and knitting and doing stuff for my shop so I did manage to get one dyeing day done where I dyed the three skeins of yarn so I was all excited I was a bit nervous um, I'm still learning obviously um, and uh, yeah so I've at the moment I think I'll just sell them under my name Lisa Love Stitch and I don't know if I decide to develop that further down the track I may get a separate name for my yarn business sort of thing um, but at the moment I think I'll just call it Lisa Love Stitching 
and um, yeah, so I got, I went to Kmart and I bought like a 15 litre um, stock pot with a lid and um, some utensils and I went to Bunnings and got a respirator mask. Um, they have been hard to get hold of recently, but luckily I found one and because um, you need that <clears throat> when the dye is in powder form it's an acid dye and so when it's in powder form you do not want to breathe it in or get it on your skin um, so you might have to make sure that you wear the proper PPE so I had the respirator on and then once it becomes liquid it's fine it's safe to take your mask off so um, yeah I got that I got also got from Kmart a um, two burner electric portable electric burner um, stove top and um, yeah so I just parked myself out in the garage um, and soaked the yarn and then um, prepared the dye and then I just had to once it was in the dye pot you just let it simmer for about an hour or 45 minutes and keep a check on it you don't really want to stir it too much because a little bit but not too much because um, you don't want it to felt the wool to felt and then um, once the dye is clear the once the water is clear in the in the pot then you know the dye has been taken up so it's the heat that sets the dye and um, yeah so once I did that I just um, let it cool down mostly and then I popped it in some cold water to clean to wash um, and make sure that there was no runoff of dye which there was nothing come out um, in the water it was clear so that's good um, and then I just hung it up in our bathroom down off the garage we have a spare bathroom off the garage downstairs so I just hung it up in the shower there to dry and it took a couple of days and it was dry and then I had my yarn so I really enjoyed the process um, I think it's gonna be fun like I feel like a witch around her pot cooking up stuff and creating potions and just making you know my own brews um i would like to get some steamer pans um so that i can do some speckled yarn and and things like that um with the stock pot you it's sort of like a tonal that you can do like it's not you can't you need the steam pans in order to do the speckling so you can sprinkle the um dye powder onto the yarn um, so yeah, so that was really fun. I also got some, um, also bought, when I bought that dye, I bought some other dyes for fabric, which I got a blue and a pink, and it's sun dye, and so what happens is you paint it onto your fabric, and you put shapes on your fabric, um, like, um, you cut out shapes, or you can have little shapes, or put leaves on the fabric, or whatever, or flowers, and then you leave it in the sun till the dye dries and then you wash the fat take the stuff off and then wash the fabric and then where the sun couldn't get to like an x-ray it leaves that shape imprinted onto the um, dyed fabric so I'm really looking forward to trying that I bought actually a box of laser cut unicorn shapes like unicorn princess castle shapes and that and I got some um, little rubber dinosaurs from the toy section at Kmart and I'm going to try that to make um, some dyed fabric to tra transform into um, doggy bandanas <laughs> to sell at the markets as well. So I got some really cute labels um, and they're silicon labels and one lot have um, Sooty and Paris and Sooty on it with a little dog's face and the other one has Lisa Loves Stitch and with a little sheep and some knitting needles coming through it because I want to make some project bags for knitting and maybe for cross stitch as well and so um, I got those labels so I'm ready to start a production line once I'm free from study and um, Yes, yeah, so I'm looking forward to trying out that dye. So I'll, I'll let you know how it goes. Uh, I might try and film it, uh, the results. Um, yeah, so that that's what I've been doing. Um, I was finally able to get some interfacing. Oh my God, COVID. I have not been able to get the interfacing I wanted for ages and ages at Spotlight. And 
it's really hard to order it online because I really want to see the thickness because sometimes I've ordered and it's been like this real flimsy stuff and it's no good or it's too thick and then you can, it's no not suitable for what I want to do with bags so anyway so that's that so we did have a couple of day trips over the break went to Bribie one day and Wayne went kayaking and we had a picnic a couple of times at Bribie with the dogs and um, what else uh, oh, I did a really nice panoramic shot I'll, I'll share with you on here, hopefully, um, of um, Wayne with the dogs on the beach. It was Paris's first time in the ocean, so she was super excited. She's not really, she's more a poodle. She tends to go with more her poodle genes and is not overly enamored by water, where Sooty is definitely embracing her retriever genes and... Um, she loves the water <laughs> you can't get her out um yeah so that's what we did and where did we go one day i think we went up to mount tambourine we went for a drive and had a picnic out there um so yeah so we had some nice little day trips in between so i still got to do a couple of day trips while i was doing my study and caught up with wayne's family um, for some birth family birthdays so that was nice and um, yeah so that was my holidays and then I came back the day after Anzac Day so just back into work and everything although it hasn't been too busy this week so that's been nice ease back into work sort of thing I'm still working from home full-time although I was so frustrated um, Tuesday morning when I went back to work I couldn't remember my login and they've got this thing set up so that I set it up before I went on holidays so that you can request your new password online no it didn't recognize my email address no it didn't work so I ring the number I get overseas because it's after hours still because I start work early Oh no, you'll still have to go into the office. We can give you your new password, but it'll be sent to your boss. So you'll have to get it off him. And then um, you'll have to go into the office to plug your computer in so that it's attached to the server so you can log in again. I'm like, are you kidding me? Are you serious? What if this was a lockdown and I couldn't go out? Anyway, so I was fuming. Anyway, I was... Um, jumped in the car got my bag together jumped in the car drove into the city had to drive around for ages before i could work out how to get into i'm not used to driving in there so it took me ages to work out how to get into the blooming car park and then i was going up and up and up the levels and i thought i'm not going to get a park here because it's later in the morning you know anyway i finally got a park so I managed to make it down to our office which my team have moved into a new office across the road from where we were and so um, I caught up with my boss and he gave me a tour. I picked up my pass to get in the building, so that's handy. And, um, and then we had a coffee to catch up downstairs in the cafe and then I headed back home. And um, on my way back to the car park I saw Daniel Morecambe's parents with balloons or something. So they must have been coming up to some milestone with their uh, foundation. So if you're not familiar with Daniel Morecambe, he was a a young 14 year old I think he was 14 or 13 year old boy at the time um, he went to get the bus by himself and disappeared and he was um, kidnapped by a um, pedophile and he was murdered and his body was left in the bush and it took years and years his parents lobbying and lobbying to keep people still searching for Daniel and they eventually found his remains um, after the bloke they caught confessed and um, they were able to locate Daniel's remains so they could have some closure but they started a foundation to help other people searching for their loved one like children and loved ones um, so that's the Daniel Morecambe Foundation so and it's the color red so he had all red balloons so I don't know what that was about and there was a photographer taking photos so that was interesting and then um, yeah so then this weekend it's a long weekend again it's Labor Day today um, and uh, today's Monday and um, so I'm not at work and yesterday um, we drove to Ballandine which is um, 
southwest of Brisbane, sort of on the south, going southwest from Brisbane and um, heading towards the New South Wales Queensland border. And it's a little country town, basically, in the Granite Belt or on the scenic rim. Um, but there's all granite boulders in people's yards and things like that. So it's uh, a really beautiful area. It's sort of got a feel of um, England or whatever because it's got a colder climate and um, actually when we have we've been there quite a few times but we must have missed it previously because yesterday when we went to first there's Warwick um, and then Stanthorpe and then Ballandine and as we were driving through those areas it was just gorgeous there was all these Japanese maples and oak trees and they were just stunning the colors all the reds and the yellows and the golden colors it was just beautiful and they're all on display yesterday and I'm like why didn't we ever see this before we've been plenty of times but we must have just come at the wrong time um, so yeah so there's just this bright flash of color everywhere and um, that was really special so when we were picnicking later in the day I found um, an oak tree had dropped all its nuts and so I was picking up the little caps because I've seen in the US um, people making those cross stitch acorns and then putting the real acorn cap on it so I collected a few of those plus some um, oak leaves and that to put um, out for on, a, on display for autumn or maybe for Halloween so I've got those downstairs I have to bring them up and oh, I was just so excited and uh, um, yeah so I collected a few of those and yeah it was just a really nice day out we went to Just Wines Vineyard at Ballandine we've stayed there a couple of times we didn't stay there you know we only did a day trip yesterday but we they have two cabins on on their property in front of the vineyards and um, They've got like two bedrooms and a little galley kitchen and a tiny lounge room um, and a little veranda off the front plus a bathroom with a laundry and uh, a carport next door. So, and they just, you can sit out on the veranda and look out at the beautiful vineyard and they have walks, walking path that you can go around the property, which is nice through the bush. Um, and Wayne stayed there a few times just to have a getaway weekend. Um, we haven't been able to go together We've only been once together when we were travelling up from Newcastle because um, the cat can't be left on her own anymore and she's too old and she needs medication every day and I have to make sure that she gets it properly so I have been trapped. <laughs> I haven't been able to get away. Um, but that's what happens when you've got a super senior cat of 20 years of age, 20 plus years of age. Um, but anyway, that's fine. Um, Wayne's going back there in July but we drove there yesterday because he wanted to get um, the bloke who owns the um, and when I say bloke if you're from overseas that's just hopefully you know that means guy um, <laughs> the bloke that runs the show there he um, has written a book on being a vigneron so um, he goes into quite a bit of detail about how to plant things and everything like that so Wayne wanted to get the book to read because we do have a, a pre-retirement dream of having a b and and maybe having a, a, a farm or a vineyard or something um, out that way at Stanthorpe Ballandine Way um, in the next you know five to ten years time we don't know um, so he wanted to get that to have a read to see what, what we'd need to do if we were to run a vineyard <laughs> you never know he might that guy might want to sell his eventually um, so yeah so we had a nice day trip out there it was about 16 degrees and windy so it was nice and chilly and um, yeah so I'll put some photos in at the end um, and some footage of the beautiful um, colorful leaves and um, yeah, so we had a really lovely day. So that was good. And then today, um, everything's shut basically. I'm gonna see if Kmart's open in some of the other shops because I need to go and get some things and I need to try and get a pair of shoes because 
the dogs ate my shoes, Sooty ate my shoes, so I've only got sneakers and we've got our nephew's birthday, second birthday coming up next weekend and we're having a family morning tea with um, both sides of the family and I can't turn up wearing sneakers. <laughs> It just look daggy. So I need to try and get some ballet flats. So hopefully the shop's open. Otherwise I'll have to go after work during the week. And um, Wayne's just tidying and cleaning the cars out there if you can hear some rattling around. And he's going to... Oh, that's right. He was going to paint the some more doors because we're painting the... Well, I'm not painting it. Wayne's painting the internal doors in the house. And we just put the door back on the master bedroom. And uh, yes yesterday and um, yeah so he's finishing up those and then if the weather's pretty nice today so um, I might try and do some more another dye pot with a different color of some yarn today um, at the moment I've only got one dye pot so I'm limited and I'm sort of wanting to make the most out of the colors so I'll probably do just two skeins in whatever color today and then another two another time and if I can get another dye pot, maybe I can do two batches or something. While the other one's cooling, I can have another batch going. Yeah, so anyway, so that's going to be our day, just relaxing. And, um, and then during the week, I'll start my assignments. So I think that's my update. <laughs> I hope you haven't fallen asleep. Wakey, wakey. <laughs> If you're still watching, high five. <laughs> Thank you. Um, well, the birds obviously didn't come, so sorry about that. The crows buggered off. <laughs> um, anyway, I hope you're having a lovely um, weekend wherever you are, or if you're back at work, hopefully you still get some time to do some stitching and crafting. Um, and, oh, that's one last thing I forgot. I got a new sewing machine. We got a new car. Wayne got a new RAV4 hybrid in an electric blue colour. It's gorgeous, drives beautifully, saves us on fuel. And um, I said he could have that if I could have a brand new sewing machine. So I got a Janome and it's a big quilters one. So watch this space. I'm still learning to drive it. I haven't done anything other than a straight stitch. But anyway, um, it does. It basically sews for you. It's just amazing. So it's ginormous and really heavy. And I'm hoping um, to do some quilting later on. But I need to get through some shop stuff first. And hopefully, maybe later in the year, I can go to like a little quilting weekend or something and learn to quilt. So anyway, that's all. I'm finished. I'll see you next time. Hopefully not... Um, in the too distant future, hopefully by early June. Um, until then, happy stitching and I'll catch you next time. Bye. Thanks for stopping.